Alright guys, welcome to the, I think it's the fourth tutorial in our series for beginning programming. In this tutorial we're going to go over decisions um, and how do you actually go about making decisions in your programs. So let's begin as a, with an example. So say for example the user was required to enter a number below 10 in our program. So say we had our program here. And then we said that the user, they have to enter the number 10. Okay. Now, you know, sometimes, well, what you find in programming or in the industry is that many users, they sometimes don't conform to these rules and they end up doing things that we don't want them to do. But it's our job as programmers to make sure that we best we it's it's a concept known as defensive programming where you assume that your user is going to make all the mistakes possible and if you code to you know if you code against that then you're likely you're going to what you would make sure is that you're restricting the input as much as possible such that the user is forced to enter what is correct so okay going back to our example so the user is asked to enter number 10 and the user decides to enter the number 9 okay what happens well, our program is going to crash if we haven't taken care of this case. If if we said, okay, what we're going to do in our program is we're going to have a set of conditions. Okay, conditions. Okay, and our conditions are going to be, okay, we're going to check if the user enters a number less than 10, if the user enters a number equal to 10, or if the user enters a number more than 10. These are our these are our three conditions okay less than 10 equal to 10 or more than 10 now if for example in your program you just had this one condition here then that would be bad programming because what if the user enters less than 10 or more than 10 what would happen is your program will crash okay so we want to make sure that we always um, include these extra conditions and obviously these are context specific because these can be different um, in different scenarios so if I rub this out okay so decisions essentially in our to make a decision in our program what we do we say in most program languages it's called if else structure it's referred to as being an if-else if -else structure. So we say if, and then we put it in brackets, we say, okay, if the user, if the number the user enters, if number is less than 10, then we want to print out an error or something like that, right? That's what we want to do. Then we say, okay, we've got two more conditions, remember? This is our first condition. What if they enter a number that is 10? They've entered... 10 which is correct which is what we want we say else if okay number is equal to 10 then we say correct and then so and then the last case where they've entered something if it's not less than 10 if it's not equal to 10 then it has to be more than 10 and what we want to do we want to end our condition structure with else number is more than 10 then again we want to print out an error okay now if you notice here what we have the first condition always has an if the last condition always has an else now some of you might be asking the question well what if we only have two conditions in our program then what we're gonna have we're just gonna have an if and we're just gonna have an else what if we have three conditions well those three are here what if you have four conditions if you have four conditions, I'll show you what's going to happen. So I'm going to rub this all out. If we have four conditions in our program, we're going to have if condition. Then we're going to have else if. That's going to be our second condition. Then we're going to have another else if. And then we're going to have else. So essentially, if you just remember, if it's the first condition, else is the last condition, 
and else if is for any condition which is um, in between. So we can have six conditions, that means the first one's going to be if, the last one's going to be else, and everything in between, which is the four remaining conditions, are going to be else if. And that's essentially what a decision control, control structure is. Um, it's nothing much to it, it's not that complicated. Um, and when we, we're going to delve further into loops in the next tutorial. But that's it for decisions, very simple. And if you haven't understood anything in this tutorial, just rewind forward back, send me a message. And uh, please do subscribe, rate and comment for any suggestions or feedback. Thanks.